estimate project cost in this video we are going to learn about how do we estimate project cost what all is involved what all costs we have to take care of what are the tools and techniques what is the output what are the inputs right so very important you need to know the tools and techniques you are going to use in estimate cost the differences between these tools and techniques what are the three types of estimates we have what are the four types of estimating techniques we'll cover all of that in this video okay towards the end of the video i will be also talking about a comparison of all the estimation techniques very important for your pmp examination let's get started okay so first question why should we estimate projects any area like why should you estimate the projects well that's very important for us to estimate the projects because first we need to plan the capacity the number of people needed for this project okay because it's going to take some cost okay you need to estimate the cost on the project because it's going to cost us some value of some money to do the project and then repeat the benefits right so first is planning the people so we need to plan the capacity that's why we have to estimate then we need to estimate because we need to know the project duration how long is the project going to ha happen right or what's the duration of this project based on that if you put estimates we will have proper margins that we are going to meet there will be some benefit if you're not uh, going to get the estimates the duration of the project along with the cost then it's going to help us so estimation of the cost also helps us plan the duration of the project then see what constraints are impacted right like for example let's say there is a particular loan that's going to happen and then you have to put more money and get the things done within that time then that's also very important that's a constraint right so you need to it also helps us to know what are the constraints getting impacted that's why we have to estimate then we estimation helps us between tracking the planned value and the actual value right the forecast right are we on track are we uh, working properly are we able to control the cost are we able to meet the project and timeline and the cost right with the quality so it helps us track the plan with the actual uh, cost and the schedule right then forecast helps us to forecast like how much money is needed for us to do this project and ensure what margins we're going to get and how we're going to get benefited then take care of margins as i told you that's important then team structure estimation helps us plan a good pyramid team structure pyramid because like in the bottom you'll have junior junior resources and then you'll have guys with like four to five years of experience and then you'll have a couple of seniors with 70 experience, and then you'll have a manager or lead over that that's a pyramid structure right so estimation helps us do that we need to do that because we need to get better margins we can't have all like people with 10 years of experience that are going to cost us a lot of cost to the project then the margins will take a hit okay that's very important sometimes we do strategic investments and for that also the estimations help but then uh, we need to have a team structure okay then as i told you the strategy is like having senior people more on the project because you want to win a project to get other projects done by delivering this project properly so for that also we need to estimate the cost okay so that's these are many many reasons i have seen in the last so many years in my career why you need to estimate projects so remember these when you're working on your pmp examination preparing for pmp exam all the reasons could be used for plan the project and estimate it right and estimate project costs the process involves coming up with the cost estimates for all the project activities so then all project activities come from the scope baseline that is the work breakdown structure right so we have to assume all the project activities and resources required to complete them work breakdown structure plays a very vital role for that and what cost should we estimate on project okay any cases like what are the kind of cost or what are the cost we have to estimate in the project let's go one by one let's understand this properly the estimation of the cost in a very simple way okay labor cost the people working on the project the uh or the workforce then equipment cost what are the resources for the people resources then the material resources that we need to the uh, project equipments like your softwares and uh, laptops or if you're working in the industry or maybe other uh, kind of equipment if you're not in, if working in non-it industry right materials needed to do the project the training for these people the training is comes a part of the cost of quality cost of conformance is what the training helps us to get uh, give better output then cost of quality is also important because that's what it is uh, we have to put some cost to maintain some good quality so cost of conformance cost of non-conformance both will be a part of this so quality efforts is important that's also going to cost something right risk effort for last projects the amount of effort you put to calculate the risk that cost also has to be calculated project management activities we have to take care of those costs right and then physical space rent this cost also is taken care overhead cost dental services taxes all those things have to be taken care 
travel costs on the project if there's some travel all this has to be taken care of right so these are some of the reasons like why what we should be or these are some of the things that you will be assuming on the projects okay it could be more but these are some of the important things you need to remember okay now when estimating the project and there are different kind of costs that you incur on the project okay the first one is the variable cost variable cost is like the like if you have a senior person his cost will be more on the project if you have a junior person the cost will be less so the wages will vary okay and the supplies of buying a material with lower quality less money more better quality more money right so those supplies will be the the cost will vary the materials the cost will be varying the wages the cost will vary so this is a variable cost okay so cost these costs change with the amount of production or the amount of work that's getting done if you work for long hours then you have to pay for overtime so all this become a part of the variable cost remember these different four types of costs i'm going to talk to you important for pmp examination you might get a couple of questions on that you have to know which cost is it and then you'll be able to answer the questions Fixed cost. Fixed cost is something like that. Fixed for the project, like the setup cost, the rent cost, the utilities cost, or the things which are fixed on the project are not going to change throughout the project. So, for example, your, your cubicles in your office, those are like fixed costs, right? Uh, rent of the office is a fixed cost. Okay. All this is a fixed cost on the project. Then, direct cost. Direct cost is actually the work that, like, for example, team travel team wages so this could be part of your variable cost part of the direct cost no problem recognition cost cost of materials used in project okay so that's the direct cost directly coming on the project right so indirect cost the next one is like your taxes your uh, stationaries uh, janitorial services that's needed to maintain the hygiene of the workplace all these are the indirect cost okay remember these four different types of cost variable cost fixed cost direct cost indirect cost remember them when these will be used okay now cost estimates has got like four uh i want to talk about the input tools and techniques and outputs you don't have to memorize them but remember what are the inputs needed what are the tools and techniques and outputs tools and techniques are very important for you to know the meaning of those tools and techniques when are those used okay so input very important for prepare the cost manage uh, estimate cost we need to have the project management plan the cost management plan is just prepared in the previous process and then cost utility management plan cost management plan tells you like what all needs how will you measure what will you measure what has to be measured right that will tell you when it things need to be taken care of for the cost when the funding will happen so that will help you with the estimates of the cost quality management talks about the cost of performance cost of non-conformance so these will also have to be taken care and measured right so those estimate has to be taken care for the quality efforts and then your scope baseline has got the entire work that needs to be done that's an input again that has also that will also be used to uh, estimate the cost okay the scope baseline gives you the work structure from which you make the activity list and then you make the activity uh, uh, is, uh, estimates okay so those are important then documents like project schedule re resource requirements risk register lessons learned all these will be inputs and then enterprise and factors and organizational process sets will also be inputs. Now, what are the tools and techniques? Very, very important for a PMP examination. Next five, six minutes, I'm going to talk to you. Remember, these expect some couple of questions on tools and techniques. Let's get started off. So, first is expert judgments. Okay, we need experts to come and give you estimates like analogous estimates, only historical work, parametric estimation, bottom of estimation, three point estimation, reserve analysis, cost of quality right reserve analysis like that we'll talk about that in contingency reserve management reserves we'll talk about it in control cost okay but you have these are all important uh, tips then cost of quality is important uh then after that you've got uh project management from system uh, like the prior tracking software the cost of the entire project your sales source softwares or the oracle software which will be using the organizations then vendor bid analysis and group decision making techniques voting techniques or uh, what is the best way to estimate or what are they going to use to estimate right those things will be important useful so these are tools and techniques we'll talk a little more indeed in the tools and techniques in the cover next couple of slides so output is basis of MS. How are you going to do the estimate on basis of what? What kind of uh, tools and techniques you're going to use? Like what is the accuracy level of precision you're going to use? That's your basis estimate. And output like now documents are getting updated. The assumption logs, lessons learned, register, risk registers will be updated. That's your input tools and techniques. Now let's talk about the tools and techniques in detail. So there are four types of estimating tool and techniques: analogous estimating, parametric estimating, three-point estimating, bottom-up estimating. Okay, I have recorded a separate video on all of these estimating. I'll be putting a link on the top. You can watch that. I'll just rush to these over here so that you get to know what the estimates things. So that is a more detailed video. Okay, so an analogous estimating. Now in these estimating techniques, you need to remember the advantages and disadvantages. 
okay when will you use what to answer some pmp questions or situational questions you need to know which technique you'll use when okay so analogous estimation the advantage is like quick okay if you want to give estimation initial phase of project quick estimate analog is good activities need not very defined less costly to create okay overall project is capped okay within this budget we want to do things Disadvantages is less accurate, estimates are prepared limited amount of information, it could be wrong, required considerable experience to do well, you will not have experts always, so that's simple. Extremely difficult for project uncertainty, we can't do it on agile projects, it's difficult for us to give those estimations, doesn't take into account difference between the projects. Okay, those are the disadvantages. Bottom up estimation advantages is more accurate, very very important, it's a detailed and best way of uh, estimation is bottom up estimating, okay, and then those parameter, uh, three point and then the, uh, the three point is mean and then after that you have got the parameter and then you have got the analogous, right. So more accurate over here, guys uh, gets buying from the team because team is involved in this, even the estimates, the breaking activities, they come with the estimates, so it's more like a team building activity, bottom estimation helps with that. Based on detailed analysis, provides basis of monitoring, controlling, performance, measurement, and management disadvantages it takes a longer time okay so padding might occur uh, needs a lot of details needs to break down delivery, thereby needs more time okay so uh, people just catch up uh, cap up their estimates and do some padding so that's the uh, disadvantage of this uh, but it takes also more time but the accuracy is very very good okay so that's the bottom up estimation okay then uh, now use the following when estimating. So what have you used the following when estimating? Cost of quality, project management softwares can be used for estimating resource cost rates, reserve analysis, group decision makings. So accuracy for estimate are really the three types: rough order magnitude estimate, budgeted estimate, definite estimate. Rough order magnitude estimate you go for estimations like minus twenty five percent to plus seventy five percent. Let's say for example you take a project for hundred days. So the initial time in the initial phase, initiation phase you can use the estimation saying that it could take hundred days. What you think? To take 75 days minus 25 plus 75 percent is like 175 days. That's the range you're gonna provide. Then budgeted estimate is gonna give a range of minus 10 percent to plus 25 percent. It will be 90 days to 125 days. Then definitely estimate the range is going minus 5 percent to 5 percent. Uh, minus 10 percent to 5 percent. That will be like minus uh, between the 90 days to 105 days. So more accuracy comes in. Rough order magnitude happens during the initiating phase. Budgeted comes during the planning phase and definitive comes during the execution phase. Okay, the bottom of estimating is where you come with some different estimates. Okay, yeah. ROM estimates is more like your analogous estimates. Okay, so those are the estimation techniques. So here's a comparison you've got which one to use when analogous estimation activity is also called as top down. There are some keywords called past data, historical data, similar data. Quick and easy way description accuracy is less as good when to use in initiation phase when details are less. Parametric estimation is, uh, is also called as. So calculations are used over here, criteria is there. If you do like uh, one developer, five years experience can build like five pages in say two days, example. That's the parameters we have, okay. Calculating some of the formulae or the historical data, more reliable than analogous, okay. Accuracy better than analogous because you're coming with some parameters. When to use when we have more historical data, we use the time. Bottom of estimating is also called as detailed web estimating, adding the estimates from bottom to top, done by the team. Bre uh, uh, descriptions of breakdown of activities, decomposition, adding the cost. Accuracy is very much, but time and resources it is more. Okay. In later stages of project during execution is when we use this. Three point estimating also called average estimate, mean estimates called like three point estimate, average estimate, mean estimate, or beta estimate or weighted average. So, what keywords look for optimistic, pessimistic, most likely. Uh, uh, more scientific way of doing this is called also called as the three point estimation. Okay. Then, after that, you have got better estimates. We need to forecast something with more confidence. We use three point estimation. Remember, this table very important for your PMP examination. Help you answer a couple of questions on the examination. Okay. As I told you, estimation ranges. ROM, which always a summary, always listening to summary so that we can remember these and make a note of these. Raw estimates, ranges there during initiation. Budgeted estimate minus 10% to 15% planning phase. Definitive minus 5% to 10% execution phase. Okay. So that's about the estimating of the cost. In the next video, I will talk to you and help you understand how to create a project budget. Thank you for watching my video. Please do like, share, and subscribe. I have also put on a short series of shorts, 100 plus shorts on YouTube for you to understand this concept. In one minute, I cover one concept with a keyword for the PMP examination. That's important for you. Please do watch that. Kindly like, share, and subscribe. I wish you all the best for PMP examination. Bye-bye. This is Aram Faraz. Thank you.